This is Amplify You, the podcast about you discovering your message and broadcasting it to the world. If you're a coach, author, or speaker, you'll want to tune in. If you're looking for the best return on your time investment to get your message out to the world in a bigger way, we're giving you full access and behind the scenes look of how we're running our podcast, how our clients have found success, and what you can do to launch your podcast today. The world needs your message. I'm Michelle Abraham, the host. Join my family as we unleash your unique genius and find the connections you need to launch your adventure today. Join us and let's get amplified. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome Amplify You family. Michelle Abraham here, your host. I am super excited today. I'm bringing you an Ask the Expert interview. So I have gone far and wide to find this expert for you. We actually met at the New Media Summit earlier this year before the whole world shut down back in March. So I'm really excited today to bring you Karen Abrams and very similar last name to mine still sounded out very differently. <laughs> but her, Karen is an amazing expert. I've had the chance of working with her personally in the last few weeks, which we're going to talk about today. But she really helps you create personal and financial fulfillment. She has helped professional women gain the confidence and financial security and personal fulfillment for more than 17 years. So she is a UCLA educated entrepreneur, master theta healer, and gifted intuitive. She works with clients and groups worldwide to transform their subconscious beliefs and break free from trapped emotions to build their success they desire and deserve. Many of her clients have surpassed their income goals, strengthened their personal and professional relationships, and gained deep insight and have altered their direction of their lives. You guys, Karen is amazing at what she do, what she does, and I'm so excited to bring her knowledge and expertise to Amplify You audience today. So welcome, Karen. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's such an honor to be here. Yay. Thank Yay. You. You're welcome. Well, I just love that you are here. And I want to, today we're going to talk about your relationship with money. And this is something that I think as an entrepreneur is so important to talk about. It's something as an entrepreneur we don't like to talk about sometimes. And sometimes we hide from our money uh, and hide from our money or we have trouble with money. And, you know, entrepreneurship is not an easy ride. And if you can just help strengthen that relationship with your finances, I think it makes it a much smoother ride. Would you agree with that, Karen? Oh boy. Yeah. We, we need to go there because that's, that's the hidden gem in all of this, because that's going to be the thing that's going to put uh, the kibosh on your efforts if you don't get that straightened out. Yeah, that's it's fascinating, right? Yet it's the one thing that most of us probably leave to last or don't want to invest in or, you know, like just ignore or whatever. It's going to get better. But before we dive into all that, let's take a look at what, like, how, how did you get to where you are today? What made you inspired to help all these women with their financial situations and personal fulfillment over the last few years? Over the last many years, right? Yeah. <laughs> a, few, a few times a few. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. It's a lot. Um, it's been a long time. Well, you know, I've always, I, I have kind of, I have two answers to that. There's one that made me want to be a healer probably was because um, when I was 17 years old, my mom got late, late stage ovarian cancer. And they said that she would live six months without chemotherapy and 18 months with. And um, she did everything she could to get better you know, just boom, boom, boom. She went everything conventional, and everything unconventional. And this was back in the 80s too. So we had an art therapist and a family therapist and a personal therapist and a, a psychic healer, which back then was totally wild. And, um, you know, then double dose chemotherapy and nutritionist, like everything wow. you could think of. And, and she got better and she lived till five years ago which uh, which was absolutely amazing. She lived another 30 years. She got oh to gosh. see her kids get married. Yeah. She got to enjoy her grandkids. Mm. She got to have a full life. And so what she taught me with all that was mm. that, um, that healing didn't just come in a doctor's office, mm -hmm. you know, and because that's the way I think our culture brings us up to think. And that, that's too much pressure for a doctor too, honestly, you know, um, that we've got to really look under every single rock and look at what are the root causes of, of what's affecting us um, so that we can heal that way. And then when you do that and leave no stone unturned, you have the best chance of getting better than, than ever before. So that's really 
what inspired me there. And then another story I have is that a, a very close friend of mine at the time, um, many years back, uh, started changing her life like really quickly in all the major areas of her life. And she had some serious issues going on, health issues, relationship issues, uh, big money issues, business issues. And um, she started working with this woman, Vianna Steibel, who's the creator of Theta Healing. And over a, an amount of time, all of these areas started started changing. And at the end of it, she was uh, she started making money. And that was my one of my biggest challenges. So I'm like, huh, that came into the real world. That isn't just like I'm nicer to everybody and everyone's <laughs> nice to me, you know. And so um, I took a class. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, I'd had anxiety for like six years, mm -hmm. and which meant I woke up every morning terrified. Wow. And I'd been working with a wonderful therapist who had helped me bring it down from like an 11 to a 2 is probably my best mm -hmm. way of saying that. And, but I still woke up terrified every day. And um, I took this class, and after the class, it was a three-day class, which was incredible. And after the class, all of a sudden, I noticed there was all this space. I, I was in my apartment going like this. Why am I swimming? What am I swimming in? I had this huge space. And I realized I could breathe easier, and I didn't even know I wasn't beforehand. And then I went, oh, my gosh, the anxiety is gone. And it was the first time in six years that my body was out of fight or flight. So I just, I flipped out, you know, I just, I flipped out. And so I just signed up for every class I could. I didn't even know what it was. Like I couldn't even explain <laughs> to anybody what this stuff was that I did over the weekend and why it helped me. And I just signed up for every class and I did it. And I, I just started practice classes and everything. And then when about three weeks later, some of those symptoms started coming back. So I started feeling a little jittery again. But by then I was in it. And I, and I just chipped it away. You know, I, I was learning it. I was getting better at it. I just chipped it away, chipped it away till I didn't have it anymore. And, I, and now I get nervous um, where you are outside your comfort zone, which is where you're supposed to get nervous. Yeah, not just because, be right, <laughs> right, not because the sun rose and you opened your eyes, you know. So, um, so that's how I got into this. Oh, my gosh. What did that do for you, like, personally, like, in your life? It just give you, like, so much more freedom. Oh, wow. It's, it's made things so much easier. I was really afraid for a long time that I would just be somebody who had all this potential that would never be realized. Mm -hmm. I had all these dreams. You know, I had friends telling me I was one of their most ambitious friends ever. And I had all these things and I just couldn't get anywhere off of anything. Mm -hmm. And I just would, you know, it was like two steps forward, three steps back. Mm -hmm. And, and so I was just really frustrated and, and felt very stuck and I didn't really know how to get the help that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And it really wasn't until I found the healing, which we can talk about what it is that, that I was able to really get in there and be able to break that cycle of all that avoidance and self-sabotage and, and create a, be able to build on my life and make it go further than it had before. Mm, wow, powerful. And so you've talked about Theta Healing, Theta Healing a few times. We've mentioned the word. What is Theta Healing? And like how did that make it such a big impact on you? Well, Theta Healing is a simple meditation mm -hmm. that allows you to connect to your inner wisdom, uh, God or source, whatever that name is for you, so that you can receive a healing. And what happens is when you make that connection and you go into that meditation, your brain waves kind of slow down into the theta brainwave dominant state. So our brain waves are longer in this state. Mm -hmm. And those are the brain waves that actually access your subconscious mind. So once we made that connection, we're able to um, find what are the damaging beliefs that you have that are going on that are really steering the ship right into shore, you know, mm. in, in the wrong way, or right into the rocks, excuse me. And, and uh, so that I'm nothing, I'm worthless, I'll never amount to much, I'll always mm. be, you know, you know, I'll always be able to just get to about here and that's it, or I'm a lovable. Mm. And you can energetically shift those and change those beliefs to their, their powerful, you know, the, the opposite really, the powerful opposite I guess would be, um, and then we can access also in this state your all your trapped emotions. So your bitterness, the anger, the trauma, 
the betrayal, things like that. And in theta, your brain actually, your mind actually talks to your body. So it could lift out and release these emotions and replace them with unconditional love and compassion and understanding. And what happens is when you can change your deepest and most damaging beliefs into your most powerful and positive ones, and when you can, you know, release these toxic emotions and replace them with the most loving and supportive ones, you're just going to set off this other chain reaction of positive things in your life. Because as you may know, and I guess we'll talk about your experience, mm -hmm. you just start feeling better and lighter. And then what happens with that is you start making more decisions in support of yourself and your the dynamics in your relationships change. Mm -hmm. And for, you know, with you in favor of you in, in, a, in a wonderful, loving way, okay? Mm -hmm. Not in a competitive way. And, um, and so when all of those things happen, it's, it's really this incredible lift and uplift. And I, I was thinking about this in terms of also just how to help people with their money issues, like specifically their money issues. It's going to help heal this relationship by changing what you believe about money, how you feel about money, and what you do about money and do with money. And those are the three things you need to be able to change this relationship into a positive place. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so full disclosure here, I had a session knowing that Karen was going to come on uh, to amplify you uh, and talk about our, your relationship with money. I was like, I, was, I don't know anything about day dealing. I'd love to like experience um, a session before, you know, we come on and then I can talk about it from like a place of like having been through it. And let me tell you, like, it was the most interesting experience of you know, I've, I've explored a lot of different, uh, a lot of different, um, you know, out there kind of therapies or things like that. And like, nothing, not, you know, nothing has really compared to the, the changes I've seen after the session I had with Karen. It was really interesting. And, um, you can speak to more to this Karen, but, but what exactly we did, but, um, I know that all I can, I can tell you now is that there was, I can relate to what you said about that space. There felt like there was this extra space in my life. Like there was uh -huh. like my level of stress went from like probably a, a 10 to like a five. Like I, oh, I, I just wow. feel like, and I feel like there was more space in my calendar, more uh -huh. space for me, like more rest, mm -hmm. like more restfulness, more time for me, wow. more sleep. Um, and then the best part of all, and I don't, and I said to the Karen before we press record on this, I'm like, this is like, I have like crazy coincidence or this, this stuff like is crazy, like a magic work. But I, right now to this day, I have more money in my business bank account than I have ever than it, since I've been in business for the last like 10 years. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that cool? Awesome. And we had our session yeah. about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And there is not nearly what there is there. And that wasn't projected either. Like that wasn't foreseeable that it was going to be that way. So um, holy smokes. Yeah. Amazing. And is, I don't know, is that typical? Is that normal? Is that, is that out there crazy? Or tell us about that. Well, tell us about that. Well, you know, one of the reasons that I love this work is because the woman who, you know, founded Theta Healing, her name is Vianna Steibel. And, um, one of the things she talked about is it's just, this work is just a really great support to what you're already doing. I, I would never say to somebody, you know, you have to do what I'm doing and nothing else. And, and also because of the lesson that I learned from my mom, right? That do everything, everything you can to get better, just do it. And, and so Vianna had a, the same, you know, idea and the same philosophy. And so I really connected to that very much. And I think what I love about this work is it honors what you've already done because, you know, we only win the, you know, we win the, we start the marathon with the first step but we also end the marathon with the last step. So all of these things that you've been doing all along, you're doing, you know, it honors all of that. Look at all that effort you put into your business, into your family, into supporting your family. And maybe it was just these little guys that we worked on, these little issues that were just in the way of, you know, of allowing the rest of that energy to complete with you and see that, get you to this point where you're like, oh, see, I can acknowledge that I've actually made some money today. That's mm -hmm. great. You know, and, and uh, 
because it, it's just so important to uh, acknowledge what you've already done and where you're going. And I definitely work with people who hit what I call the upper limit problem. I, I don't call it this, excuse me, this is from uh, Dr. Gay Hendricks. Um, uh, and, and he talks about this as, it doesn't matter if it's a financial thing, if it's an energetic thing, an emotional thing, we get to this point and we hit a ceiling, right? Mm. And we can't seem to get past it. I guess that's right. better to put it like that. Yeah. <laughs> we can't get past it for whatever reason. All of our efforts have, haven't been able to do that. And this work can help you find out what that is and get to the root cause of it mm -hmm. and change it and shift it. So it's just no longer in your way. And, and you know, you didn't come to this meditating in a cave and wonder why your business hasn't gone anywhere. You know, you came to it really working mm -hmm. and doing great things. And then this was just something that allowed the rest of the success to, to show up for you. Yeah, it was like almost like doing some weeding, right? Like, so it's like yeah. doing some weeding in your garden, like taking care of a few little niggly things that are in the way. And, um, and so when, during the session, if you don't mind me talking about it, sure. um, you said there were some contracts or things like that. Can you just explain what, what exactly that means and what that, what that means to get rid of them or to break them? Oh, sure. So we talk about in this work, vows, oaths, contracts, agreements, they are kind of all the very similar, same things. And these are unconscious promises that we could have inherited mm -hmm. from our ancestors. And we even know this through ep epigenetics that, that there are things passed down in our genes that we receive. And um, there's definitely fears and traumas and belief systems and all of those sorts of things that come um, so, so you come in with all of these things, including these agreements and they, and they come from a place of usually of, of integrity and they could be, you know, vows or, or contracts to save the world, save humanity, save your family, save everybody you love, take on, have you ever had this one where you take on the energy and the information, the energy experience and, and, um, of the people and the emotion of the people who you're in the room with, you just sponge it up. You know, or if you ever see somebody when they're sad and then you feel sad afterwards. And usually there's these unconscious promises you're that you made. Or something too, right? Yeah, and, <laughs> and exactly. And they're just these unconscious promises that, and unfortunately what they do, even though they come from a place of usually of wanting to help people, they take away your free will. Mm. And so they're a drain because you cannot fulfill a 24 seven promise. No one can, right? You could save the world today and be like, yeah, but there's tomorrow. And, and I didn't see everybody. I these things. Like, I, this seems so strange to me that, like, our subconscious made this decision that for us, like, that we did. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, well, think about it because there's also these bottom beliefs of, of uh, desiring to earn our existence for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And um, also children, children and animals do this thing is they come into the world and they've got this big open heart, right? They're like, hi, right? They just like, hi. And, and so they're just open to everything. Mm -hmm. And so when they see somebody in pain, they go, I'll take that. Like, mommy, I'll take that. You don't have to feel so sad. I can do that. And so, and, and actually children are in the theta brainwave state mm -hmm. almost all the time, which is why that period of our life is so impactful for us. You know, is why isn't like it seven or eight years old or something? I think is it what they are in, in the theta brainwave? Like, yeah, for the first yeah. for that first time, um, for that first, yeah, seven or eight years. So, think of everything that happens yeah, during they that just time, sponge it all up. and they just sponge it all up. And so, when we can, so in this work, we call it we complete and finish them so that you can make those choices. If you want to save humanity, you want to save your mom, you want to save your friend, and everybody. Just make that choice every day and then work on that choice every day. Mm -hmm. And that way you can kind of complete it that day and have that sense of, of accomplishment as opposed to I'll never get this done. Because, you know, when we, when we go there, we're just beating ourselves up and we, and we can never recover. You know, we can never really ever feel truly free from it. Yeah. Wow. So powerful. So for us to even know that we have these, these vows or these contracts is that so will we will it kind of come up in our if we're doing a theta healing meditation ourselves or is that something when you're working with a practitioner that that will come? well i think you can tell if people have them anyways because of the way they act you know their behavior like if you're thinking and you always think the same way like i have to i have to sponge in all this information or i have sponge in all of this energy and i always you know are you overly helpful 
You know, are you one of those people who has to be the helpers? Not you choose to be the helper, but you have to be because you feel like you've got to earn everybody's love. You know, I mean, love is such a deep, the, the need to be loved and the need to belong, you know, in Maslow's hierarchy of needs is, you know, right above, you know, right above eating and sleeping and, you know, all of those things that we just need just to stay alive. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's a very key need of ours. So we're usually willing to do a, a whole lot to make sure that that happens. Yeah, <laughs> I can see how you can get into those patterns. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, very easily. And what if you grew up in a family where everyone dismissed your needs and the only way you were noticed is if you helped them because they were so wrapped up in their story, whatever that was. And, or you were living with an abuser, so you had to kind of uh, throw a few stakes to the lions just to make sure that, that you could just walk across the room, you know? Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's incredible. Oh my gosh, yeah, there's just so many things that we don't even know that's happening in our subconscious that yes. you know, until you kind of start to unravel and pull out those weeds, then all of a sudden, like you said, that space just kind of opens up and it's an incredible feeling. And it's not real. It's not really, it's like, it was more of a feeling for me anyways of like, oh, it's slow. things just, everything's just felt a little bit easier. Like that's kind mm-hmm. of um, without even like, oh, I mean, I'll, those past few weeks, I haven't even really been like, oh, this was because of this, but things have just felt easier they've right. gone smoother there's been you know more abundance more you know um just ease i would say in family and home in travel in work in finances like it just felt easier <laughs> that's amazing yeah and that's that's what happens you know i think that's the most natural thing that happens to people when they do mm-hmm. when they have one of these sessions because you know people do have instant healings and remarkable things can happen Mm -hmm. and i think that we tend to love to talk about the extreme examples that have come and i believe that excuse me i believe that that instant healings happen because once again it's that marathon and that last thing is like you're ready for it yeah you're just finally ready in a bigger way and receive it and and you're always just you're ready to you're ready to heal at your own in your own divine timing and the, mm. if this is what you're ready for, and I think most people who come already want to feel better and lighter and right. already want some, some level of result. Mm-hmm. And, and then from there, it just goes on, you know, and expands from there. Yeah. And it, interesting. I just, as you're speaking about that, I just realized something too. Um, in, as part of our session, I had, um, you know, a lot of people I've known have um, committed suicide and they're all in the same sort of group of like high school kind of friends. Oh, and, um, and my parents had just recently in the last couple of years moved back into that neighborhood and I hadn't been in that neighborhood for many, many years. And so I was getting a lot of emotion every time I'd go back into that neighborhood, driving past each of these people's houses where they grew up, where all this, you know, where we grew up and went to school and everything. And it was hard for the first like several months of going to my parents' house. And I just realized that I, you know, this came up in, in our session together and I don't mind sharing this is, you know, we did some clearing around the, the trauma and, and, and releasing, releasing it. And what I just realized is that I just spent last week in the neighborhood in going to my parents' house back and forth a few times. I didn't even think about it once until just now. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, it that didn't even come up in my mind. Um, so I feel like that created a lot more space. <laughs> so thank you. That was huge. Right. You're very welcome. I mean, them moving into that neighborhood was obviously your opportunity to connect with that grief, you know, again, Mm -hmm. and it was waiting for you. I always say grief is a very, very, and trauma, obviously, too, very, very powerful emotion Mm -hmm. and emotions, and they will sit and they will wait for you. They will wait decades, (laughs) decades for you to mess, to to deal with them. And and if you don't, I always say that that your, your body takes over and and tries to resolve what you have yet to resolve in your life it might be a cold you know it might trip you know like it doesn't have to be a big thing so i'm not here trying to be this ominous you know person here um about it it's just a powerful emotion and there's so many gifts that come from processing it and Mm -hmm. so much more awareness and like you said um it, there's just an ease and a freedom that you'll you get when you actually do that and and sometimes you never know like what's holding you back from your success or your money because you just, 
you just don't know. I can't tell you. Here's I can say these are the things that usually happen with most people that I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but everybody has their own recipe. And okay. if grief is part of it, you know, and that's such a big thing for so many people, when you start really processing that out, you know, you do have room to put in, you know, to let things happen because this big thing isn't in front of you the whole day. Mm -hmm. You know, like I always look at it like um, garbage, not even garbage bags, but like grocery bags. And it's like you grow up and you're like, oh, okay, well, my mom never, you know, my mom was wrapped up in herself and she never uh, noticed me. Okay, I'm holding that bag. And then my dad was wrapped up in his story and he was at work all the time. Okay, and I'm holding that one. And, you know, and it's just the bags keep coming up. Mm -hmm. So we can't, when we have all this baggage, we can't, it's hard for us to do the things in our life because our hands are already full and our arms are full. Yeah. And so when these things get let off, like you said, all of a sudden you can move around and you can attend to things differently. Yeah. yeah so interesting. Uh, like I, and I actually never knew that that was something that I had grief around or that I was still right. processing until, until it came up in that session because yeah, of course I got emotional, but I hadn't really kind of really like thought that that was actually holding me back. I just thought that, oh yeah, I went back into the nostalgic neighborhood of where I grew up kind of thing, like, and just mm -hmm. dismissed it like that. If I had no idea the impact it was actually still having like 20 years, like 20 plus years later, mm -hmm. like holy smokes. <laughs> it just waited. And look, our lives, it's not that we all have time to thoroughly grieve everything that's happened to us or thoroughly process. It's a lifetime. We need, you know, and, and when we're ready, and this was your divine timing, I always say, you know, this was the perfect opportunity. If you didn't use this opportunity, it would come up again. Yeah. You know, you would, uh, life will always give you another chance to work it out. Right. And your subconscious will always come back to it because it's like, ooh, you know, we never figured that thing out. Remember that yeah. thing that right, right there? Let's, let's, let's come back to that. I'm going to bring somebody who reminds you of that person or I'm, I'm going to do this or that. You know what I mean? So it would have come up again. This is just yeah. you took this opportunity. Yeah, and, it's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And so when, you, when people go through these sessions, do you recommend doing several sessions over a course of time or what's the normal like protocol? Do you just do these meditations on your own afterwards or how does it normally work when you're working with the Theta Healing? Well, I say that everybody's different. Some people come and they have, I say they have, they're, they're project people. So they say, this is what's going on in my life and I want to work this one thing out. Like, I don't like where I'm working and my boss is mean to me and I got to figure that out. And then they'll come to me for a while and then I come once a week or then I come whenever they can. And, and then once that thing is, is done, I won't hear from them for six months until something else happens. And so they'll just, you know, whenever something's coming, I'm here, you know, just come and let's, let's do work till you feel better and, and move on and you'll come back when you come back. And then other people just use this as like, this is what I do every week. You know, like this is my therapy. This is how I do it. So that whatever comes up, I got it. I got it covered. And, you know, and then some people are one and done. They're like, I got this thing. They get it done. And I don't know when I'll see them again, you know, which, and it's all great, you know, every, everybody, but everybody just has a different, yeah. a different need. And I honor that. I always say, I'm not here to be a hard sell about it. You know, when you need to come back, <laughs> <laughs> because you'll notice what's getting better and you'll notice what's the same. And you'll be like, I want this to go up to here, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then you'll come back and you'll come play. That's awesome. I love it. So now we're talking about relationship to money. You said something really interesting to me about money and like treating it like your best friend. So can you give us a couple of tips for entrepreneurs that are still like, eh, money, uh, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things. Give us a couple of tips that we can take away from this call today about working with money. Well, so the best thing you can do to find out, to assess where your relationship is and to change your relationship with money is to imagine, like you said, imagine that money is your best friend. Mm -hmm. So if we assess, how are you treating your best friend? Mm -hmm. And like for me, I was a big financial avoider. That was my deal. Mm -hmm. And so, and I avoided money to such a degree that I, by the time I was 30 years old, I was $20,000 in debt. It took me $40,000 and years to uh, rectify it, but the all the other issues were still going on, right? Mm -hmm. And, and so I, I couldn't even get out of that until I had this work to go dig deep within my subconscious and shift all those and break those cycles. So 
what you can do is look at the simplest thing is what was that relationship like? So the way I treated that relationship was my friend money. I never called her. <laughs> I never told her the truth when she needed me most. I was not there and she couldn't be there to support me either. So you can look at it that way and then you can translate that into concrete actions to take. So you can, um, you can, visit your money so go you know we online you go and visit your money every single day to see how much money you have you can check your debit cards and you can check your credit cards and find out what you're spending your money on so that if you need to change something up you can change something up and if you want to be supportive and have a supportive friendship then you have to start having creating savings you know um i'll tell you that that uh what is it 40, there's a study done that said that 40% of Americans don't have a thousand dollars anywhere, just like free, so that in case the radiator falls out, your kid has seven cavities, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever else happens in your life happens, they have to immediately go on credit. And so if that's what's going on immediately, imagine, you know, with COVID, let's say, mm -hmm. with what's going on with economic shutdown how devastating that is to at least 120 million people all at once. So you can just start by, by creating that $1,000, you know, this, this is sound advice and, mm -hmm. and it's advice I've gotten from other money experts. Okay. And, you know, take, get a thousand dollars and save it up so that you can just have that fund mm -hmm. and then, you know, start paying off your debts, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit, just little percentages at a time. And, um, and then you can also start uh, saving up so that you can have, take a percentage of your money and start saving up so that you have enough for like six months worth. And you mm -hmm. just do it slowly, you know, just do it slowly. You don't have to, whatever, what, however much money you're making, if you're putting percentages of those in different bank accounts for you just to start building, then your brain goes, oh, look at me, I'm working on it. Instead of, I don't have enough money and I can't put enough away and it's not yeah. going to make a difference, right? I'm doing and, good, yeah. Right, and then we just stay, we, what's that great quote, argue for your limitations and they're yours, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so if you start doing that at, at whatever, you know, wherever you're at with your money, you're going to start taking care of yourself. You're just going to start feeling better and more confident. Mm -hmm. And that, that is the kind of energy that's going to bring in better results for you in any way you know, for, from any situation. Yeah. Awesome. I've really like taken that to heart. I love that. I love that treating your, treating your money like a friend, like that's been really great takeaway for me. So I appreciate you sharing that with our audience and um, guys like reach out to Karen. She's an amazing resource. I loved um, my session with her and it was just so much fun. And uh, Karen, you have a free gift for our audience today. Is that right? Oh yes, I do. It's Tell called, about it. it's a Theta Healing Meditation and it's called Revitalize Your Health and Wealth. So it's, I think it's about five minutes. I mean, it's a really, just an easy thing you can listen to. And it has what we call energetic downloads. It's saying, you know, would you like to know what it feels like to be completely loved or, mm -hmm. you know, have enough time or have enough space, whatever it is. I'm not, I'm not going to go into it right now, but, and these energetic downloads that you listen to and you say yes to, if that's what you want, will help you uh, improve your health and help you with um, heal your relationship with money. And I call it an evening meditation because it takes, you know, it's like five minutes, but if you do it right before you go to sleep, your subconscious takes whatever you do right before you go to bed and it marinates in those feelings and those experiences mm -hmm. for the next eight hours or so, however long you sleep. So if you really want to get the biggest bang for your buck here, then do it right before you go to sleep so that all that wonderful energy will just be marinating through your subconscious for the rest of the night. Awesome. That sounds great. And where else can our audience find out more information? We'll put the link to that gift in the show notes and anything else, where else can we find out more information about you, Karen? Sure. You can find it at my website, which is thinktheta.com. So that's T-H-I-N-K, like think and theta, T-H-E-T-A.com. And you can reach me there and I have contact there so you can even give me a call and we can discuss if this is a good fit for you. Perfect. Well, I love it. Thank you so, so much for giving us so much valuable information today. 
I have loved this session and it's been so cool to uh, work with you. And then like even some of the things I didn't even realize until we were talking to him, like, oh yeah, so many cool things have come out of just that one session with you. So guys, I highly recommend it, especially if you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're feeling stuck this year or feeling like 2020 was beating you up, definitely go check out what Karen has to offer and uh, reach out to her. And until next time, Amplify You family, make sure you get out there, amplify you, and have a safe and healthy week. And Karen, thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. This has been an honor and just a wonderful time. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. Till next week. Enjoy your week.